not fraud. Nevertheless, I think they should have taken that risk. But it's it's easy for me to say uh, that they should take the risk. I mean, but I, you know, it's a little more difficult for them to make those decisions. They're dealing with the survival, the life and death of a state. Yeah. Well, I just, you mean, I, uh, what are your, your suggestion is that there's not enough pressure coming from the United States on Israel? No, I'm saying, like, there's something wrong. I don't know what's wrong in the relationship between Israel and the United States. Because you stated, you said, that Israel can go to the United States. Israel can survive by the United States. Yeah. And at the same time, Israel don't trust the United States. This one, the Well, I, st I don't, I, did I say don't trust? Maybe I should say they have doubts about it. They have doubts about the United States, and it's a You always have doubts about people you depend on, don't you? Why? I mean, that, that's exactly, that's, that's precisely the formula for having doubts. When you, when you know that your survival depends on somebody else, and it does depend on, we agree that it does depend on the United States, and then you begin to see that this, this country that you depend on. Mind you, I'm not saying the United States ought to stay in Vietnam or Cambodia or wherever. I'm simply saying that from the Israeli point of view, as they see all these things happening, at the same time that they depend on the United States and have no choice and have no alternative to depending on the United States, they can still have doubts about it and doubts about where it goes. Uh, it seems to me that's, it's, it's not a watertight case. Uh, Yeah, we agree. Okay. Right. Well, they don't know. I mean, how? Okay. by no means a criticism, on the contrary, it's a compliment, that you may have, you know, a greater degree of, of a sense of Middle Eastern hospitality or sense of dependence uh, uh, than, there, than exists between two countries like, like uh, Israel and the United States. Uh, and that sense of dependence which operates between individuals uh, in the Middle East uh, may, not, may not be operating in the case of two nations. Uh, and there may be a sense of distrust uh, at the same time as a sense of dependence. Thank you. 
Well, wait a second. The, wait a second. Uh, the formulas, both in the Sinai and in the Golan, were not, were not definite and total formulas. Egypt was not going to sign anything, and I think the Israelis understood this, uh, which meant that if the Israelis moved, let's say, uh, 75 kilometers back behind the passes and gave up the oil fields, it would not prejudice uh, Egypt's claim to all of the Sinai. And the same would have been true in the Golan, and it still is, uh, potentially still is true, that if Israel uh, and Syria come to terms on giving up a few kilometers of the Golan, the Syrians will not accept this as prejudicing their total claim to the Golan. In other words, these are interim steps. And uh, I, don't think, I don't think your point is correct. I think there would have been, in this next step, uh, just another disengagement, another step, which would not have been, by any means, a total settlement in the area. Well, I know, that's exact, of course, that's exactly what the problem is. Both sides think that the other guy wants too much, and that's why they didn't reach an agreement. We just and you're time. taking one side of it. We just have time for just one more question, so. Okay, Kevin. Yes. Well, if he's reaching the end of his era, he's not going to take us anywhere, is he? <laughs> but uh, I think that certainly I think this is one of the pernicious things, if I did my own view, of this whole business of linking Israel to Southeast Asia, which is a kind of game that's being played now because of the desperation in Washington and in the administration about getting support uh, for Vietnam and Cambodia. Uh, and the sort of stuff that we see, you know, from a senior official uh, in the airplane, uh, this gloominess about the whole world, uh, I think is, becomes a kind of political ploy. Uh, it becomes one of, uh, if you don't uh, uh, help us, uh, if you don't, it's talking to Congress, of course, if you don't give us uh, the $220 million for Cambodia, $300 million supplemental aid for Vietnam, and so forth, everything's going to go down the drain, including Israel. And if Israel goes down the drain with it all, I mean, this is the kind of argumentation they're using, uh, it's going to mean you guys aren't going to get elected because all the Jews in your constituencies are going to vote against you. I mean, that's, that's the kind of bludgeon that I think the administration is using. No, I understand that. But okay. Let's... Do you, do you want my views on those places or on Israel? Well, on the impact on our territory. But that's what I've just, this is what I think we've got to, we've got to stop doing. I mean, one of the, it seems to me one of the weaknesses in the Kissinger thing is, is the so-called phrase of his called linkage, in which everything gets linked to everything else. There's no reason why we can't have one kind of commitment uh, to Israel and the Middle East and a different kind of commitment to Indochina. I think Indochina has been a waste of money and a waste of lives since the very beginning. I mean, I started going there in 1959, and it was a mess from the beginning. We should never have been involved. And I don't, you know, and we're just reaching the, the end, the logical end of that whole thing, you know, ending the whole thing with this terrible uh, bloodbath which, which we're creating ourselves in that country. Okay, uh, my own view is we ought to cut out of that area. I'm not saying, you know, we should give, we should, I think we should provide some humanitarian aid and help refugees and so forth, but I think we should stop fighting in that area. Now that's, that's Southeast Asia. Uh, but I don't think because we, we ought to get out of that area, uh, we ought to just cut, the, cut the, the, the line to Israel. I think that we owe something to Israel because we were present at the creation. I mean, if it hadn't been for Harry Truman, there wouldn't be a state of Israel. And I think we are committed to the survival of that country. I would like to see Israel survive within, you know, there's a difference between the state of Israel uh, in the Middle East 
and, the, and Vietnam and Cambodia. When we talk about Vietnam and Cambodia, we're not talking about whether the state's going to survive. We're, going to, we're talking about what kind of a government's going to run it. Is it going to be a communist government? Is it going to be a neutralist government? Is it going to be a right-wing government or whatever you want to call it? Uh, if you cut Israel loose, it could end up with no state at all there. It's not a question of what kind of government runs it. It's a question of whether you're going to have a state of Israel. And I think we have a commitment to that state. What is the extent of it? It's, it's its survival. And I would like to see it survive. As I said, I'd like to see it survive through diplomatic means. I don't think we ought to send troops to Israel. And I don't think the, and the Israelis don't want American troops there. Uh, but I do think we, you know, we owe, we owe it something for its survival. I think that pressure probably will be put on Israel to come to terms. And this is what this reassessment uh, that we're talking about is all about. I think in the months ahead, we will see uh, pressure. Now, whether the Israelis will succumb, will submit to this pressure or not, I don't know. I would like, I would like to think that they would uh, take a much more flexible position uh, towards negotiations. Yeah. Well, I, you know, that's been one of those uh, things that have, there's been sort of like a mating dance for years. They've been dancing around each other uh, and never really reaching an agreement. And the most recent case, as you know, they've been having secret meetings and so forth for years. The most recent case was in, in July of 1974, after the Syrian disengagement, Hussein claims that he uh, uh, that he uh, asked Kissinger to put him into contact with the Israelis to discuss the possibility of this uh, West Bank state within a Jordanian federation. And that thing aborted, uh, partly because Kissinger was busy with Watergate, partly because the Israelis uh, were just trying to create a government, and their government was, what they had was very weak, just as weaker than it is now. Uh, I, would, I would think there's a possibility here. Uh, I think the possibility uh, like all other diplomatic possibilities, today seems a little more remote uh, than it did the other day when I was more optimistic that better there be a settlement in the Sinai. One of the reasons why I thought a settlement from the Sinai was so important was that it showed that diplomacy could work. And uh, that's one of the reasons why Sadat wanted a settlement. He wanted to be able to show his own hawks that you can get, you can retrieve territory through diplomacy rather than going to war. And Egypt can't, Egypt would have great difficulty going to war right now because they haven't been getting Soviet supplies in any great numbers for the last year. And also there's a terrible economic problems going on in Egypt. Uh, so I wouldn't discount the possibility of a deal with Hussein, between Hussein and the Israelis. I don't, I just think it's, it's further back than uh, I would have hoped it would be. I think we better call off the questions. I certainly appreciate all of them. And if you have any additional questions, Sure, Mr. Carnell, I'd be happy to talk with you afterwards, but I think we better call it an evening. Thank you very much. Thank you.